Today on Grid City News. The federal election is still five months away, but Prime Minister Trudeau and Andrew Scheer continue hitting the road with campaign-style speeches. President Trump took a few gentle shots at the trade imbalance with Japan during his visit to the country today. And the Lethbridge Walk for Dog Guides raised funds to provide specially trained dogs at no cost to those in need. Your nation. Your province. Your Southern Alberta. From the heart of Lethbridge, it's Bridge City News with Paul Arthur. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. The annual Pet Value Walk for Dog Guides takes place in around 300 communities across Canada, including in Lethbridge, to raise awareness and funds for the Lions Foundation of Canada Dog Guides. The Lethbridge Walk was at Henderson Park today, where a number of dedicated people came out to show their support along with their dogs. This year, the Pet Value Walk for Dog Guides Lions Foundation are trying to raise about $25,000 to provide service animals for people all across Canada with special needs. Uh, there are six different programs that the foundation has. Autism dogs, diabetic alert, seizure alert, canine vision, hearing and service dogs, which help people in wheelchairs. Uh, this is our 16th year doing this in Lethbridge. Uh, there is a national walk that does take place on May 26th. Dog Guides Canada has already provided specially trained dog guides to more than 3,000 men, women and children, all without any government funding. The Sun Life and Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation walk took place today at Nicholas Sharon Park to raise funds for research to cure insulin-dependent diabetes. There's about 300,000 people that live with type 1 diabetes in Canada. We say about 2,300 school-aged children here in Alberta. And we've been doing the Sun Life Walk to Cure Diabetes for JDRF in Lethbridge for over 10 years. And everyone came together today in the community. It was a great day. We had over 200 walkers and raised over $25,000, which will go towards type 1 research and JDRF's mission to cure, treat and prevent type 1 diabetes. Well, spring is the season for fundraising walks. There is yet another important walk tomorrow. The 15th annual Walk to Make Cystic Fibrosis History goes at 10.30 a.m. at Henderson Lake Park. The genetic disorder affects the lungs, pancreas, liver, kidneys, and intestine. But research has made a significant impact. Back in the 60s, a child with cystic fibrosis only had an average life expectancy of age 4, compared to today's average of 50-plus years. Participants are encouraged to bring the whole family. After the walk, there will be a barbecue, bouncy houses, and music. Officials fighting a wildfire in northwestern Alberta fear that the winds fanning the flames near high level could change this weekend in a more dangerous direction. Shane Schreiber with the Alberta Emergency Management Agency says winds are expected to switch direction on Sunday. About 5,000 evacuees are being told not to expect to return until at least next week and that provincial emergency funds for gas, food and other expenses should be available by Monday. Monday. Alberta's new United Conservative government is being criticized by the opposition after newly elected Speaker Nathan Cooper fired Clerk of the Assembly Merwin Saher, who was appointed just before the election by the NDP, and replaced him with longtime senior parliamentary counsel Shannon Dean. Both parties are accusing one another of making a partisan appointment. Cooper denies that the appointment was political. A poll done for the Association of Canadian Studies suggests one-third of Canadians believe all elected officials should be banned from wearing religious symbols. The poll was done to gauge public sentiment for Quebec's proposed secularism law that would ban public servants in positions of authority from wearing religious symbols. Most Quebecers surveyed believe federal, provincial and local politicians should not be allowed to wear hijabs crucifixes and turbans on the job. Canada-wide, 49% of respondents were against a ban, while 37% said they would support it. The Public Health Agency of Canada is investigating an outbreak of salmonella linked to Complements brand chicken strips. Sofina Foods is recalling its products sold across the country in 907 gram packages with a best before date of November 24, 2019. If you have the chicken strips, you should either throw them out or return them to the store where you bought them. Transport Minister Mark Garneau says proposed voice and data recorders for locomotives will make Canada's rail system safer. Transport Canada is laying out rules for the use of the recorders, which will now be subject to a 60-day consultation period. They specify when companies can use the devices to address safety concerns and how workers' privacy will be protected. 
Prime Minister Justin Trudeau wrapped up his work week with a visit to Halifax, where he was welcomed with both cheers and jeers. Protesters shared their dissatisfaction with the steps Ottawa has taken to reduce carbon emissions and its support of the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion project. Trudeau met with Nova Scotia Premier Stephen McNeil, one of Canada's two remaining Liberal Premiers, and also gave a campaign-style speech to the Nova Scotia Liberal Party annual meeting, criticizing his opponent, Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. Andrew Scheer himself has said that he's Harper with a smile. In other words, exactly as advertised. Do you think Canadians would have felt better if Harper had smiled when he closed down veterans offices? No. If he had smiled when he cut employment insurance? No. When he raised the age of retirement? No. See, Canadians deserve better than Harper's failed policies. Meanwhile, Andrew Scheer delivered a speech at the Canadian Club in Vancouver yesterday, dropping his previous pledge to balance the budget within two years if elected, saying the Liberals have made it impossible to do so responsibly. Instead, Scheer promised to balance the budget within five years. It's essential that we responsibly phase out the Trudeau deficit. The bigger it gets and the longer it lasts, the more we'll spend on interest payments to wealthy lenders, and the less we'll have for our cherished programs. And the more debt we add while the world economy is strong, the harder it will be when the world again brings trouble to our doorstep. Even the most optimistic projections don't have the Liberals balancing the budget for 20 years, meaning the Liberals would add to the debt every year for the next two decades. But if Canadians elect a Conservative government this fall, we will balance the budget in a quarter of that time. My platform will have a fully costed and independently vetted fiscal plan that will get Canada back into the black. One that eliminates waste, slows spending growth and phases out the deficit in the medium term. Two former Liberal cabinet ministers who resigned over the SNC-Lavalin affair will soon let Canadians know what their next steps will be. Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott say they will announce their political futures at simultaneous events on Monday. Neither is saying what they have in mind. Wilson-Raybould is the independent MP for the BC riding of Vancouver-Granville, and Philpott is the independent MP for the Ontario riding of markham stouffville U.S. President Donald Trump has begun a four-day state visit to Japan by gently needling the American ally over its trade imbalance with the United States. Trump has recently threatened Japan with tariffs on foreign autos and auto parts and had predicted a trade deal could be finalized during his trip. But that seems unlikely, given the two sides are still figuring out the parameters of what they will negotiate. Today we're cooperating closely across many industries, including defense, technology, digital economy, and energy, also infrastructure, science, and so much more. As you know, the United States and Japan are hard at work negotiating a bilateral trade agreement, which will benefit both of our countries. I would say that Japan has had a substantial edge for many, many years, but that's okay. Maybe that's why you like us so much. But we'll get it a little bit more fair, I think. I think we'll do that. With this deal, we hope to address the trade imbalance, remove barriers to United States exports, and ensure fairness and reciprocity in our relationship. The official race to succeed British Prime Minister Theresa May won't begin for another two weeks, but the field of contenders is growing quickly. With Health Secretary Matt Hancock making an announcement today, May is going to step down as Conservative Party leader on June 7th. Her successor will have to try to complete Brexit, a task that May failed to deliver during her three years in office. The Twitterverse is responding with banana puns pictures of minions and Monty Python jokes after Toronto police tweeted they were investigating reports of a man armed with a gun. That's because officers who raced to a corner in downtown Toronto discovered the supposed gunman was actually a person carrying a banana. One person tweeted the police asking if the suspect split when they arrived. Recapping one of our top stories this hour, people from the Alberta community of high level are bracing for what might be a renewed threat. Winds are expected to change direction tomorrow, which could blow the huge wildfire closer to their homes. And a look at weekend weather, a few showers or thunderstorms ending near midnight, then a 30% chance of showers overnight with a low of 6. Tomorrow, mainly cloudy with a 30% chance of showers and a high of 15. 
A private member's bill has been brought forward designed to protect physicians who do not want to participate in medical assistance in dying. Hal Roberts sat down with Saskatchewan MP David Anderson to get the details. That interview is next. But first, here's a look at what's happening in and around your community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. The YWCA Lethbridge District will be hosting summer play camps from July 2nd to August 15th. They're currently seeking volunteers between the ages of 13 and 17 who enjoy being outdoors and playing with younger kids. This is a great opportunity to develop leadership skills and begin to build experience for future resumes and school applications. Volunteers must be able to commit to at least one full morning or afternoon each week. For more details, call Yvonne at 403-329-0088. Kick off your summer with Alberta Blue Cross and Silverberg Group's Street Eats Festival on Saturday, June 15th, beginning at 11 a.m. at the NMAC Centre parking lot. Enjoy delicious and unique food truck cuisines, a kid zone, entertainment, and an eating contest. This event is in support of Lethbridge Family Services. For more information, visit lfsfamily.ca. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar.